Okay, so we left it off where we had this path with the colon slug. So what that colon slug is, is a parameter. It's a parameter that's being passed to that path. So now we need to set up our video detail component to actually handle that parameter. So let's go ahead and look at that video detail component and we see it's fairly empty, right? So what we need to do is import something called activated root. So import activated root or route from Angular router. So what this is, is a provider that allows us to really just work with the route that's being suggested to us. More specifically, getting the parameters from this route. So what I have to do is put it into my constructor and I'll call it private route and activated route. Now I'll explain private and public and all this stuff later, but for now we've got our activated route here. So what I can do is on my ng init or on ng init, we can do it in here, but we can also do it in the constructor, but I will do it in the ng init. So when I say do it, what I'm about to do, you can do it in either spot. So I'll say this dot route, this dot route is referring to that route right there. Because in the constructor, it's basically adding this in as almost if it was right here. So just keep that in mind. So this dot route dot params. So the parameters that are related to this route, we're going to do subscribe. And we'll say params equals colon, or excuse me, equals then the greater than sign. Um, so this is essentially a function that's um, basically turning what's being passed into params. I'll explain that in just a moment too. I'm just going to go ahead and console log params. Okay, so we save it, go back into our project, click on one of the parameters, and it's still uh, redirecting us because in our video list, we need to change this to being videos. And of course, those video lists are, uh, or that, that ordering or that URL is because of this right here, of course, right? So let's go back and click on one and we see videos item one, video detail is working. And down below, we see our parameters is slug of item one. So um, what this is referred to, let's go back and here, this right here, this is called a fat arrow. And something we could do is this.route.params.subscribe function params console log params. So we, we save that and refresh in here. Notice that it's loading it twice. So basically what, what the fat arrow does is kind of take place of this right here. So you can just say equals to that. Uh, but you also want to have params. It's just kind of a shortcut that TypeScript has to running things. Um, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so we've got that. Um, I do want to add one more thing in here, and that is I want to set this route to something. Notice that I have subscribe here. Now, what subscribe does is saying, like, if something's loading, that is, if I ran an HTTP request to a server, um, you would subscribe the result to it. So um, it's called an observable. So when you subscribe, you also want to unsubscribe. Otherwise, it can lead to memory leaks. Just remember that if you see subscribe anywhere, you're going to want to unsubscribe it somewhere. So all we need to do for that is add in on destroy. So basically when the instance is destroyed, so that specific URL, when you navigate away from it, um, you will work with it just like this. So we have on destroy much like on init. So we just do ng on destroy. And now I want to unsubscribe from this. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to add a new item in here and say private and we'll say route sub and I'll just set it to any. And then I'll set route sub equaling to that. And then route sub, or excuse me, this dot route sub equaling to that because this is related to that parameter. And then this dot route sub dot unsubscribe. Okay. Uh, again, this is something you're going to want to do whenever you see subscribe. 
It's called an observable. It's a little bit more advanced than what we're talking about here. But the main thing is the main thing. And the main point is to do it. Just do it. Okay. So the next thing is I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to add slug here and I'm going to make it a string. So slug is another parameter and I'll do this dot slug equals to params slug, right? So the parameters were slug, right? That's, that's all it was. Okay. So that means that inside of my component, I can actually add in uh, the detail component. Instead of this, I'll just say slug. All right, and refresh, and there we go. Now this other stuff might be making it a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. So what I'll just do here is I'll say, um, just simply p class serve up, and that's it. All right, so it looks like a, like, like a logo possibly could be. Okay, so we've got item one, and if I go back into my videos, uh, same sort of thing can happen. I see that I got my videos list, I can click on one, and there we go, click on another one, there we go. And then I can actually use any sort of slug and it'll actually be in there. So um, that is how we can dynamically route these um, modules with our app routing. Now, yes, you can use multiple of these. All right, so I save that, go back into that detail component and bring back the console log of params click on one of the videos, uh, notice it's saying pff, not a valid route. So I have to go back. I'm just going to go ahead and copy one of these videos links real quick. And I'll just say random stuff here. And I put that random stuff in so I can see my object has the a few different parameters that are even being passed. So that's something else that's kind of cool to know um, in case you need it later. Okay, so the trailing slash is not necessary um, because if you don't have the trailing slash, that happens. But if I had the trailing slash and go into it, it will actually redirect me to removing that trailing slash. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, so that's it for dynamic routing with your components. If you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.